Well, hey, y'all, I'm Joffrey Swate, Chief Academic Advisor at Kepler. And today I want to go over the classes that we have to offer in 2022 that would fit the fine arts, what the French would call beaux-arts or belles lettres. Okay, so we're going to have fun with the fancier side of things. The things that prove, the classes that prove to us that we are interested in truth, beauty, and goodness for their own sake. So I'm going to begin uh, on our website by clicking on humanities and electives. Now you can simply search for art or music or literature or writing here in the search by subject course or teacher bar. I'm going to go ahead and click on humanity and electives. And let's begin with a controversial choice for our category today. Photography for Art and Commerce 1. There's one, two, three, and four. These are enormously popular courses. Controversial because this isn't just for art, it's for commerce. Are we sullying our hands? Of course not. Mr. Eads understands truth, beauty, and goodness, and then we're going to apply that to every Part of our lives, including the commercial part. How excellent is it to be an artist and to be able to make a living at your art? So Photography for Art and Commerce 1 is the foundation course in a two-year photography program. So this is one semester. There's one, two, three, and four available to you. Um, some of my own children have taken this. And as I mentioned, these classes are enormously popular. And it's in no, it's, there's no small credit that goes to Mr. Eads and his crew of students uh, that our photography club in Kepler Life is absolutely popping. Next, I'd like to highlight a course that is for grades 10 through 11, uh, given by Annie Nardone, Creative Writing for $650 a year. In this course, you'll be studying a variety of creative writing genres. You will be able to stretch your creative muscles and work to write a memoir, devotional, poetry, fictional theatrical piece, and a children's book. You'll learn how to resonate as a small group of writers. That is so valuable. Just like Tolkien Lewis and the Inklings. We will take some of your writing to the final stage, Others you will keep at a draft level, but you'll have a writing portfolio at the end of the year. Now, this course and other creative writing courses that we've had, uh, some that my, that my kids have taken, and I've loved seeing the fruit of their work in these classes. I think sometimes writers fall prey to a trap that, say, a musician or a painter would be less likely to fall into. Y'all, art is work. Art is technique. It's just not, it's not just having beautiful thoughts. It's learning the technique of transmitting those beautiful thoughts. And this course is an absolutely excellent way to do it. And I love that she is including poetry, including in these course objectives to refer to classics of poetry and literature as inspiration and an example of the student's own work. We base ourselves on the greats. Imitation is at the beginning of greatness. And here is a teacher who's well aware of that. Here are some of the, the uh, texts that you would be looking at in this course. Bandersnatch by Diana Glyer, The Singing Bowl, Poetic Meter and Form, Wind in the Willows, a biblical devotional that has resonated with you. And that right there sort of points out that this course is for upperclassmen, 10th through 12th grade. There's going to be a lot of back and forth, a lot of interaction, which is an absolutely fantastic way to learn creative writing. One of the things that I appreciate about several of our art classes is the continuity they have within themselves. So for example, with photography, there's one, two, three, and four. With music theory analysis and composition, there's one, two, three, and four as well. And one of the things that actually shows is that over our couple of years of existence, what has happened is that students want to keep studying this stuff. And so the teacher says, okay, looks like number two, number three, number four are up. So. Each of these music theory courses is one semester. Um, and if you already are advanced in your studies of music, it may be that you want to start in three and you could certainly talk to Mr. Daniels or to me about that. But there's a whole arc here that's quite beautiful in music theory analysis and, analysis and composition. This is another one of those classes that has led to a robust club within Kepler Life. Music Club absolutely destroyed it in the talent show this year. They're always active in our Slack, sharing stuff with each other and with the general uh, student body.
So this course is a guided exploration of music within God's created order, integrating their critical thinking skills developed from other liberal arts training integration. It's like, it's like all our teachers get it. Students will examine and discuss musical phenomena from the ground level up. Students with extensive musical training will gain valuable insights into understanding their craft and role as musicians more deeply. Students with little to no musical experience will acquire an essential understanding of what music is and how it functions within God's created order. So what are your objectives? To read and write basic music notation, to understand and discuss the mathematical foundation of harmony and rhythm, to understand and discuss the nature of melody, to develop basic skills at identifying musical objects and analyzing their significance, to create your own compositions. That is absolutely key for any student coming into this, whether they're advanced or beginner, to broaden your musical horizons, to develop significant appreciation for the role of music in society, and to activate and integrate all of one's intellectual faculties while engaging with music. And I think that's one of the things uh, that sometimes we humans struggle with with the arts is that we, we consider an art to be a very narrow focused expression of one particular ability or way of thinking. And that's not the case. Whole human beings creating whole things. And so Mr. Daniels values integrating all of your intellectual faculties when you're engaged with music. Here is one of my absolute all-time favorite classes. Those of you who have been with us for a couple of years know that I've talked about this class quite a bit. It's how to write a fairy tale. I have a profound love for fairy tales, as does Mrs. Lily Wilmoth. So this class is available for $600 a year. Uh, it's uh, Tuesdays at four o'clock Pacific. Whenever you're on our site, if you, if you log in, the time it gives you will be the time correct for wherever you are located. We live in a world of paradoxes, light and dark, good and evil, spirit and body, reason and emotion. Our God is a God of paradoxes. God became flesh and dwelt among us. He died but rose again. Also, he gave us a way to comprehend these seeming contradictions, our imagination. How Chestertonian to make a distinction between paradox and contradiction. So, course objectives. Learn to analyze literature through thoughtful reflection. And I love that she says literature because... It's not just analyzing fairy tales, it's understanding that there's something fundamental about fairy tales and how they're told that reflects human reality uh, and that we can use that to analyze all of literature. Uh, to demonstrate understanding of poetic terms and forms, to develop characters. So you write your own fairy tales in this stuff. And look at the texts from the abolition of man through to the little mermaid and the lion, the witch and the wardrobe, crime and punishment. Who would have thought that How to Write a Fairy Tale would include books like Fahrenheit 451? And of course, it includes On Fairy Stories by Tolkien. But have you ever thought of The Wind in the Willows as a fairy tale? Here's General Studio Art, taught by my wife, Mrs. Swait. Uh, and it's available Friday at 10 a.m. for $600 a year. This course is for the students to, if it's for students to learn the seven elements of art. Again, technique, so fundamental to doing anything with the Beaux-Arts, with the Belles Lettres. Lines, shape, color, value, form, space, and texture. Students will use many techniques, drawing, painting, printmaking, pardon, printmaking, sculpture, collage, etc., to gain a general understanding and appreciation of art. Students will have the opportunity to experiment with various media in this class. So one of the coolest things about this class is that you get to do a bunch of different stuff. You get to sculpt, you get to draw. She also offers a drawing course. One of the coolest things that I personally find in, in this class is the printmaking. I mean, I think every student is gonna have their favorite, but actually cutting out the prints, um, you know, so, I, I love seeing her do stuff with metal and doing stuff with wood. I think there's some, it's some sort of foam material that you use for this, but learning to make those prints, I mean, it's gonna put you in touch um, with medieval art, with Reformation era art, uh, just learning how to think three-dimensionally. I, I, I love uh, that particular aspect of this class. But one of the coolest things is that it's a survey, but not just an intellectual survey. It's a survey with your hands and with your eyes. All right, I'm gonna talk about one last class for this video, and it, it, it is an odd choice and perhaps not one you would have uh, thought of in this category as you go through our website, game development and design. You know, I, so I've been talking about how important technique 
is. So here's a course that, well, you could think of it as development, as an IT course. It's not, it, this is a design class. This is a class that, you know, when you're designing video games, video games are art. And you're designing not only for the all the senses, uh, but for the, you're actually thinking about the user experience and what the person uh, will be experiencing as they go through your game, and not just in a passive way, but in an active way, which I think is something that will sharpen your thinking for any art, right? When you play music, when you make a painting, what are you doing to the viewer, to the listener, and what do you want them to do? What do you hope they'll do? There's nothing better for developing that sort of thinking and that sort of technique than video game design. So this course is on Friday uh, from 12 to 1.30 Pacific and $600 a year. This course will provide students with an overview of the most important aspects of video game design and development. Students will build games from scratch throughout two semesters. The year will culminate with the students making their own game from scratch and releasing it to the public for their final project. In addition to the broad swath of technical disciplines that fall under the umbrella of game development, here it is. Students will learn what can make a game true, good, and beautiful. We'll study positive and negative examples, consider what games are for, and what they could be in the future. So there are two video lectures per week, and then labs are on Fridays at 12 o'clock. The first course objective is just to learn the art of game development. Boom. So those are the classes I chose to feature for fine arts, but really I encourage you to go to our humanities and elective tab in our website. Just scroll through and check out all the wonderful options that there are for this academic, academic year of 2022. The peace of Christ be upon you.